Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this occupational intelligence tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about acute learning and we're going to see an example of like how we can set up um, a acute learning environment and then how we can apply that in code and I feel like uh, create an example where our agent is going to um, interact with the environment and, try, and then try to like um, find an end goal in some grid world. So first of all, let's have a short recap here of what reinforcement, uh, reinforcement learning is. And reinforcement learning, it, it involves an agent a set of states uh, that the agent can be in, and then a, a set of actions per state that um, that the robot or like the agent can take for a given state. So the agent transitions from state to state by taking uh, those actions um, that is that is given or that is available for a, a given state. And then the agents, when it, when it takes um, actions in the environment, then it it receives a reward after that. So we can like give reward to the agent, like to, to, to like tell it how good it has performed for taking some given action in some uh, given state. So the goal of the agent is to maximize um, its reward and try to like get the maximum reward um, by taking all the actions in for any given states to reach its goal and then maximize the reward to find like an optimal way um, to reach that goal. And the potential reward is the weighted sum of the re expected returns of the future rewards. Uh, from the current state that is currently in now. So this is uh, what we're going to do in Q-learning. And on the next couple of slides, yeah, I'm going more in depth with what Q-learning is and how we can actually like apply this to like get the potential reward um, and calculate like the weighted sum of the expected returns um, of the future rewards from the current state that we're in now and then apply that to find an optimal policy for our agent that it can follow. So down here we have like an example of like how it works with reinforcement learning. So we have this agent here that takes some action in the environment at some time step t here. And then for that given uh, state that, it, that it's in now, it is this, the agent is now in a state and then it takes, takes an action in this, in, in this state here and at the same time step. And then it gets a reward for that, uh, for that action that it takes for that time step. And then we just go to the next time step. So now we have taken an action and we're transitioned or moved to a new state. So it will be um, S T plus one here. And then we just continue doing the same over and over again. So the next state that we're now in is fed to the agent here. And then for that given state, it is now taken a new action based on, um, based on the, the feature or like the potential uh, rewards in the future. And then we take this action here in environment and we get a new state and get new rewards and it just keeps keeps on doing this. And then um, by doing this, uh, our agent can learn and try to like um, calculate or like try to estimate um, estimate the maximum reward that it wants to get and then reach the goal in, a, in an optimal way. So let's now talk about Q learning here and Q learning is a model free reinforcement learning algorithm. So it means that we don't need our model to be fully determined and we can just like place our robot in the environment and then we can have some different kind of algorithms that, that either like explores and exploits the environment. So we don't need a model when we're, when we're dealing with Q learning um, algorithm in reinforcement learning. So Q learning is trying to learn the optimal policy or like the quality of actions uh, from a given state over time. So if we're in a state now, we're trying to figure out what is the best action to take uh, for that state that we're in now. So then that, that is what Q-learning is trying to, to, to find is the optimal policy that we can just find to get the maximum reward and follow the most optimal path. So it also requires that um, the Q-learning or like our, our process has this finite mar uh, market decision process and it has market property. So the actions that we're taking now is only depending on the state that we're in now and not on the previous states that we've been in. So it's only the state we're in now that we're taking action from. And if we want some information from the previous states, like we have to implement it uh, in, the, in the given state by using some, some memory. So Q learning, it learns the optimal policy by maximizing the expected Q value of the total reward for all the states starting from the current state that we're in now. So this is like what we can set up here down in the, in, in the Q function, which we're going to, to apply when we're going to, to apply a Q learning in code. So we have this Q value here for a given state and an action that we take. So this is like the Q values here that we're going to update our Q table on, uh, Q table with in, 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 um, in the Q learning. And then that state here, or like that value, this Q value here is equal to the reward for this given state and this action that we're taking, plus the maximum rewards for all the other uh, states and action, um, state and action pairs um, for that given state we're in now and, and the action that we're taking. And then we can scale it with some kind of factor here um, if we want to like have our 
um, other like other rewards um, having more impact or less impact. So the queue line algorithm here, it like after the times that the agent will choose an action to get to the next state. So we're in a state now and we're, we're feeding that state to our agent and then it will take some action in, um, in the state now. And then the weight for the action depends on the gamma factor as, you talk, as, as I just talked about. So valuing the rewards received earlier higher than those received later. So we can just then scale like all the values or all the re rewards um, in the future um, with this gamma factor here, which we're also going to use in, uh, in Q learning at the example that we have in the code. So the cure line function here, it calculates the quality of a state action pair. So it, it tries to like measure how good, how good an action is for this given state that we're in now. And then we will have this Q value here that we're updating our Q table with. So first of all, with this Q learning algorithm here, we have to initialize our Q table with zeros, which will be updated during training. Like we can also initialize our Q table uh, with nothing and then update our Q table when we're uh, visiting a new state, for example. So we don't have to like initialize a big Q table if we have a lot of different kinds of states. Then we can just have our agent exploring um, the environment and then and then update the Q table and then insert the states that we're visiting um, while exploring the environment. And then when we have done this here, we're taking an action from the current state that we're in. We get a reward for that action we're taking. And then we enter a new state uh, with that action and then we update the queue table with what we have learned and with the reward that we have uh, that we were given for taking that action um, in in that state we were in so this is what this equation or like this function down here it it says and and this is what we're going to actually like imply in code to apply this Q learning algorithm so this is the example that we're going to, to use and we're going to implement in code. So we have this queue learning uh, method here, or like this example here, where we have uh, these different kind of rooms here. And then we're going to initialize our agent in a random um, in a random room here from one to uh, to four, or for similar to four. And then we have this uh, fifth room up here, which is the goal room that we want to uh, reach. So our agent will be will be put in, in one of these rooms here, and then it will try to figure out how to get from, from that room that it's placed in to the end goal here five and then it can also like for example from the first uh, from, from the second room uh, the zero of the room here it can only go to room four and then from room four you can go to three and and one and then to five so that will be a valid path uh, for the agent to take um, in this environment here when it's trying to figure out how to get to the end goal and if we were in the second room here we have to go from two to three to one to five so this is the example that we're going to apply and implement in code so we're not going to Google call up here and this is like the kind of ID that we're going to use to implement this uh, queue learning algorithm here. So first of all, we're going to impart NumPy, Pandas and Random because these are the modules that we're going to use to like create um, the queue table and also the reward uh, matrix. And then Pandas to show the data frame and get a, a, like a more intuitive way to, to see what's going on. And then the random module here because we need to uh, initialize our, our first state or our, our initial state as a random, as a random room. Then first of all, we have this reward matrix here that we're going to set up with the environment. So we know that we have the different kind of rooms here. And then we, we set up the rewards uh, for all the rooms here. So on the rows here, we have, um, we have, um, we have on the rows, we have the rooms. And then on the columns, we have the actions that we can take uh, by being in some state or in some room. So in this case here, we have minus one if we don't have a valid path or like a valid trajectory between uh, one of the rooms. And we will have a zero if we can, for example, go from room zero here to room four. Then the action four here will have reward of zero because we are able to go from uh, room zero to four, but we're not uh, able to go from zero to any other room than four in this case. So in the, in the case here of the first room, we know that we can go to either goal three, which is this zero here, or we can go to the end goal here, which will return a reward of 100 because we want a really hard uh, reward when we reach this end goals for our agent. So it will be able to learn that reaching this uh, fifth room here or like room five is, is really good. So it will like uh, get a really huge reward for, uh, for getting to this end goal here. And we can only get to the end goal by being in room one here. So this is what we set up in our reward matrix here, which is kind of like um, in the environment that our agent is going to operate in. So we've just run these cells here. We use the data, uh, the pandas data frame here to visualize it, it better. So we have this, uh, we have this environment matrix or our reward matrix, which is yielding the rewards that our agent can take, uh, can, can get for some given um, state and some given uh, action that it takes in that state. So we have this, the rooms down here on, 
on the on the rows and then we have the columns here which is the actions that we can take for some given state then first of all we have a function here that can initialize um, our queue table with some uh, with zeros so in this case here we're just going to hit this here we have this um, queue matrix here with the, that we're going to initialize um, with a six uh, six uh, six by six grid here six by six grid and then we will initialize our our queue table here which we're going to update when we're when we're learning and training with our agent in the environment then we have a function here to set the initial state because um, we want to get a random initial state so we have this room here as as default so the rooms here will be six as default and then we just um, return a random number between uh, zero and, and six which is the rooms that we're going to initialize in or like set the initial state to then we have a function here to get the action that we're going to take for some given state. So to take some action in some given state, we, we need to know the current state. So we'll pass that as, as, as parameter. And we also need to know the reward matrix so we can go in and, and see, see what different kind of actions can we take in some uh, current state that we're in. Then we have a new array here that we have the valid actions that we can take because we can only take an action if we can actually go to the other room, um, to another room or to go to the end goal. So then we run through all like the actions here in this reward matrix here for the current state. So we run through all the actions in our current state that we're in. And then we see that, then we say that if the action is equal to minus one, then it's not a valid, um, then it's not a valid action. So if it's, if it's, um, if it's not equal to minus one here, it will be a valid action. And we just add that action here to the valid actions. So after that, we, we can then take a random choice of the valid actions here because we haven't learned anything yet. Um, so we don't know which action is best to take. So when we're learning here, we're just going to take a random a random choice uh, when we get the action here for the first time for some current uh, for some current state here, because we don't know um, what is the best action uh, yet because we haven't learned anything. Um, we're, we haven't learned anything. And then when we have this get action function here, we can actually like return an action for some current state by using this reward matrix that we're set up for an, our environment. And then we have a function here, which is like kind of when we're going to implement the queue learning uh, function that, we, uh, that I showed you in the slides as well. Um, so we have this function here to take an action and we need to pass the current state that we're in, the reward matrix, and then the gamma, which is the scaling factor of, of the future, uh, future rewards. And then we have this rows here if we want to display uh, the output. So first of all, we have to take we have to get an action here by using this function that we just talked about, which is the get action here for some give, uh, current state and the reward. So now we have taken an uh, taken an action here, and we have this action stored in this variable, and then we will call, calculate like the first part of the um, of the queue learning uh, function, which is the current state action reward, and then the reward will be. Um, this reward matrix here for the current state and then the action that we, ch that we chose to take in this current state that we're in. So this is the, uh, the reward that we get for taking this action here with this get action function here. And then we have the second part here, which is the uh, feature, future rewards um, for the actions um, to take and to, to get the next state, which is the next state action reward. So we take the maximum value of all the states that we can get to by using this action here in this queue matrix. So in this case here, our queue matrix is is, um, is zero for the first time here, but it will learn over time. And then we just print out the reward here. We don't need to do that. Um, and then we can set that the, the, that the current state value here for our queue function will be uh, this value here, the first part that we calculated, plus um, the gamma factor, which is the, the, which is the scalar to this uh, future reward. And then we multiply that with the NS reward here. So this is exactly the function like these three lines that we're doing here is exactly the function that I showed you in the slides uh, with the queue learning and the queue function. And then we can say, then we can then now update um, our queue matrix here for the state that we're in and the action that we're taking. And then we can set that equal to, the, to, to this uh, queue value that we calculated with this function up here. So now we're updating our queue matrix and then it will update over time and, and try to estimate um, the reward matrix that we then that we initialize in the start and trying to figure out what is the best path to get to the end goal So now we set the action that we're taking um, to the new state because when we the, our action when we take an action We will now transition to a new state So we set the new state here equal to the action and then if we want to print it out It will just print out the matrix here and it will print out the first states here and um, 
and if our if we're in state five we just print out that the agent has reached its goal and we we can now terminate our episode when we're going to train and then we return the new state here for this action taken so we know that we take an action and then we calculate the reward for that action we take we update the queue table and then we return um, the new state that we're in by taking this action um, in the environment with our agent then we can go down here and initialize an episode so this will um, be in it and like in the first episode and then we can have um, when we're training we're going to to initialize this uh, multiple times so we're going to train and call this function like multiple times to update our queue table so first of all here we're just having like this current state here is equal to the initial state and this initial state here will be a random uh, initial state for every time uh, we train our model or every time we call this um, initial episode function here and then we have a broad while true here um, and then it will just run until like um, our, we are at state 5 which is the room 5 and we have reached our goal and then we just have this current state here which is equal to the action taking so we just keep on taking action and then we store it in this current state here and when we take an action that is equal to 5 um, that, that results in new state equal to 5 then we know that we reach uh, room 5 and our, and, and our end goal and we can then break out here and our episode has finished and we have updated the queue table so this is how to run one episode um, of our uh, of our training process. So to run this multiple times, we have this train agent um, function down here, which takes like the number of iterations or like the number of times we want to train our uh, our agent, and we take it take the reward uh, matrix here, uh, the gamma scaling factor here, and if we want to display what's going on. So. When we have this train agent here, it runs a given number of episode and then normalizes the matrix so we can see the result. So first of all, we just have a follow here that has one episode here. So we run, um, when we run, run through like one to to the number of iterations or like the number of episodes that we want to um, to train our uh, uh, train our agent on. And then we have this initial state here, which is just set equal to set initial state, and the initial state here is just a random uh, a random initial state. And then we have this initial episode here, which we just talked about, is is the kind of, is the function that we're going to run over and over again. So this function here is one episode, and it will terminate when our agent has reached goal five, and then it will update it, um, the queue table while it's training. So we'll run this initial episode here. So we'll run like all the episodes um, number of iterations time, and then we just update the queue table and when we reach our uh, our our, um, our end goal, and then. After we've been through all the episodes, we will just uh, print out like the training has completed and we have now updated our, our Q matrix and we're trying to estimate the reward matrix and then we can return that Q matrix or a Q table and then we can like display what, what we have learned by training this agent in the environment. Then we just have a function here to, to normalize the matrix so it's a bit, bit more intuitive to see the result um, of the training process. So we have a control, control enter here, it will run the program and we can go down here and test if, if it actually like works. So in this case here, we have this gamma factor here of 0 0.1 and the initial state here will be, uh, will be two. So in this case here, we just uh, chose, um, chose one, uh, one initial state here. We can also have the set initial state. Um, so it will like have a, a, a random initial state. We can also do that. So our initial state here will be equal to the random initial state here. And then we pass that, um, Pass that initial state to the get action function here, and we will get then get an action, and then we can run our our episodes here. So this is the case for one uh, one test or like one episode that we're running over. So if, if I print this out here, we can see that we we st we start at the we start at uh, state two here, and then we go to state three, and then from state three here we go to state one, and then from state one here down here. Um, or like we can also go from state uh, three to two, but it didn't really like we didn't really reach the goal here And then we can just keep on doing this until we reach our our end goal down here um, it, it, run, it ran over like a lot of different kind of um, Episodes here. So now we have reached our end goal here and we can now update like now we have learned how to get from um, two here to five and it took a lot of different kind of iterations because we didn't need any we didn't know anything about um, the environment and we didn't have any rewards that um, that that our agent has learned so it didn't do anything about the environment 
and it had to learn all of it, but it has not reached its, its end goal. And we can see that at that the reward or like the queue function here or a queue table here is updated with this uh, 100 here because we got, get a, a reward of 100 when we reach our end goal. So this is just an example of how we can run one episode and then when we're going to train our model we're going to run multiple of, of these episodes here to try to estimate the reward um, the reward matrix with our queue table. So to train our agent down here we have this gamma, fa gamma, gamma factor here again and initial state as we just, just did and then we're going to run uh, this process here for 2000 of times and then train our agent for 2000 episodes and if we hit control enter here it will now train the agent in the environment and then it will print out the queue table here that we have learned um, from the agent. So these are like the values that we can take take uh, when we're going to apply or like deploy our agent in the environment and we're trying to, to get the shortest path and, and, and to, uh, to the end goal um, which will um, return the maximum reward. So if we just wanted like we can just print it out here in the, in the data frame here when we have normalized this as well so we can see that if we're in room one and we take, we can either take um, this uh, this action here or this action. Um, but if we take the action five here, we will reach the end goal. And when we're trying to uh, apply or like deploy our agent um, with the, this queue table that we've learned, then we, it will always take the maximum value of these queue values here that it has learned for some given state. So it will also, also always take the maximum reward um, that it's yielding here. So if we want to deploy our agent here, it takes an initial state and then the queue table that it has learned. And then we just set up this while loop here um, that runs uh, through like and just takes an action. Um, as I just talked about, it will take the action with the highest with the highest reward or like the maximum queue value in the queue table. So this is what this while loop here does. And then if the action is, is equal to five, then we print out it is finished and we return the number of steps that it, that it, that it took to reach the end goal for uh, from the initial state um, that we were in. So if we hit control into here, and if we go down here and deploy our agent, then we can see that if we start at room one here, it will just directly go to room five and the number of rooms in actions it took was only one. So if we try to initialize it over here in room zero, for example, um, and hit control into here again, we can see that it now takes four actions. So we'll go from room zero here and it can only go to room four. So we'll go to room four here and then to room three. But now it can it can both go to room two and one. But it had it has learned that now up here that if we're in room three, it will take the action with the maximum um, Q value up here, which is indeed uh, the first action. So we will go to room one because this is the maximum value eighty here. It will now go to room one, and then from room one, it will go to the end goal here, which is five. And we have now gone from from this room here to room five here by only taking four actions um, in the environment. So we can see that our agent has learned how to get from from one room to the end state by just learning um, learning in the environment from um, from operating in the environment and trying to estimate this reward matrix. So this is like a simple example of how we can apply reinforcement learning and queue learning um, in an example and in a grid world where we have um, these different kind of states here and some different kind of actions that we can take. So this can be converted to a lot of other different kind of applications and. And this is just like a really nice thing and we have learned uh, we have like our agent has learned how to operate in this in this environment uh, by itself so thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video if you like the content and you want more in the future i'm calling also doing a computer vision tutorial in uh, c++ with opencv and an algorithm data structure tutorial as well so if you're interested in one of those i'll link to one of them up here or else just see me next video guys bye for now